Hi everyone, my name is Paul Ambrosiusen and today I'm going to be showing you how you can install MLOps 2.0 for Houdini. Now, whether or not you're a new user of MLOps or you're an already existing user that's been using 1.0, it is highly recommended that you follow these instructions that are completely revised for version 2.0 of MLOps. If you already have MLOps 1.0 installed and you think you can simply upgrade it, um, please don't do that. Install it from scratch because you will run into issues that simply do not exist if you install it from scratch, okay? So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna to go to our GitHub page, right? Which we can find with, uh, if we just Google for MLOps Houdini, uh, we should find this page. Or alternatively, we can go to bismuth.at slash MLOps and you will also come to this page here. Now, to clone the repository, what we're gonna to need to be doing is first create an empty folder. I've done this in the H drive on my machine slash GitHub slash MLOps2, but you can put it anywhere on your system, okay? Next up, what we're gonna be doing is click on this green button here and use our preferred method of cloning a repository to our machine. We could, for example, download a zip, which is going to download a snapshot of the repository at this state. I do not recommend using this method because it is gonna be very difficult and a lot of work to update it whenever there's some bug fixes. You can, of course, use the command line interface. Uh, if you're a lead hacker, you can use that. Or if you like using visual clients, then you could use this option here, which says open with GitHub desktop. Now that's the one that I'm gonna be using. So I'm gonna be clicking that, which will prompt me to open an external application. In this case, once we've done that, we can see that we get this uh, prompt here that says clone a repository, which is going to be automatically putting that link to the repository here, and then specify a local path of where we want to clone our repository to. Now, in my case, like I said, I already created an empty folder called MLOps2 right there, and I'm gonna be using that as my folder, okay? Then I'm gonna be clicking clone and just wait for it to complete downloading MLOps to my machine. Okay, so as you can see, it has now completed downloading. So when I go to that empty folder that I had before, you can now see that we have a bunch of stuff here. We have a new data folder, which is where all of the dependencies and all the other models are gonna be downloaded to. So we've completely removed all of the stuff that MLOps would be modifying in your user preferences. Everything with regards to MLOps is now being stored inside of the package itself, which makes it a lot easier to remove MLOps, to update MLOps, and also to uh, manage and modify other data that we are now using in MLOps, um, which is why you need to completely reinstall MLOps from scratch. You can, of course, also find you know, the hip folder with some example files that we have created, as well as, of course, all the OTLs that are MLOps. You also have the scripts folder, which has a bunch of new scripts that you can find and play around with to, for example, create your own tools, as well as git ignore license file and some more menu related options here. So to install MLOps to our Houdini, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be copying this MLOps.json file from the folder that we have just cloned. So I'm just gonna copy that. And then I'm going to be going to our Houdini user preferences directory, which on my machine on Windows is documents slash Houdini 19.5 slash packages, which is this folder here. If you don't have a packages folder, you can simply create one with this exact name, packages all in lowercase. Now, next up, we are going to be pasting uh, that JSON there. In my case, you can see I already had a mlops.json file there that was for the 1.0 release of mlops. As you can see, I'm gonna completely get rid of that and modify this from scratch. Now, you may be thinking, I already have it, I'm just gonna simply modify it. Please don't, because we have renamed some of these variables here uh, for it to properly work. Okay, so now what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna modify the environment variable called MLOps, okay? It is very important that you install MLOps through this JSON package because of these environment variables that are used all throughout MLOps. Okay, so what are we, what are we going to be setting that uh, variable to? Well, of course, we're gonna be pointing it to that file that we just downloaded, right? Or the folder rather, which is this MLOps directory. So I'm gonna be copying the path of this folder and just simply paste it in here. Make sure that on uh, Windows, you change this to be forward slashes and hit save and we should be good to go. 
If you want to try and play around with some of these, for example, where models are being downloaded to and what the default model is, uh, feel free to do so, but do that at your own risk. Now, once we have changed this and we hit save, if we were to boot up Houdini, we would now have access to MLOps on our machine. So we're gonna be doing that right now. Simply open up Houdini and wait for it to generate all the required files. Okay, so as you can see, we have now um, booted up Houdini with MLOps installed, uh, but we can't find it on our shelf here. So what we're gonna be doing is click this little plus I uh, icon here, go to shelves, and then find the option that says MLOps and click it. So I'm gonna be clicking it. And as you can see, we now have four new options on our shelf under the MLOps tab. We have install dependencies, we have pip install, we have download model, as well as convert model. Some of these are new for MLOps 2.0, but the one that I want to point you at is this one here, the install dependencies. So once you have installed MLOps and you've changed your JSON to point to this file, uh, you of course need to install the dependencies. Now, because we're using some brand new cutting edge stuff, installing dependencies is going to require Git, okay? If we go to our install instructions, we can see that before we um, click the install dependencies button, we need to install Git. Now, to install Git, uh, simply go to the readme page and click on the little here word, which is going to show you how to install Git for your corresponding um, OS, right? So if you're using Windows, you can use you know, these instructions. If you're using Mac, you can use these. And if you're using Linux, you can use these instructions. Now, I'm not going to be covering these in this video because they are very straightforward to install. Uh, so please do that before you continue on with this video. Now, once we've done that, uh, I'm going to close Houdini again uh, because, of course, it needs to know that Git is installed on your machine. So after you've installed Git, make sure that you open up a new copy of Houdini so that we can continue with Git being part of your path of your environment. Okay, so Houdini has once again booted up. So we're gonna go back to our MLOps shelf. And after we have installed Git, we can now click this install dependencies shelf tool, which is going to open up this dialog, uh, which under the hood is going to download all of the dependencies that MLOps requires. Okay, so now that this has completed, you should see this pop up here. Simply press okay and restart Houdini. Okay, Houdini has booted up. Uh, what we can do now is start playing around with MLOps. Now, if you want to be using, for example, the stable diffusion uh, tools that we have in MLOps, it is highly recommended that the first thing you do is simply click this shelf button that says download model, which is going to download the 1.5 stable diffusion model in the diffusers folder, uh, which is the default that we now use for MLOps too, because it works best with ControlNet. Now, like I said, um, it is highly important that you do not update MLOps 1, but start from scratch. And the reason for that being is that, like I mentioned before, everything is now stored in this data folder. And this data folder, as you can see, now has the dependencies for Python all installed here uh, so that we can isolate and use these just for MLOps. Now, if you download a model, it is going to be creating a folder here called models. Uh, which is where all of your models are being downloaded to. So if we click download here, we should see that it is going to be creating um, a models folder here, right? As we can see uh, with a cache as well as a diffusers. And the reason for that being that we've uh, changed our layout from the original checkpoints folder to the data slash models is because we are no longer simply a stable diffusions plugin, right? Which was never on the only intention. We now, for example, also have uh, models for uh, transformers. We have models for removing backgrounds. We have models for picks to picks. We have uh, lots of other uprest tools. We have a lot of other future plans in the works, which is why we've made these changes that you see here, um, which is why unfortunately MLOps 1 is not compatible with MLOps 2. So I'm gonna be waiting for this to download and then show you a very simple example of how to use this newly downloaded model in MLOps. Okay, so once it's done downloading, you can see this pop up here. Uh, we can close this uh, console and then we can go to the geometry context and drop down one of the new nodes called MLOps as the pipeline, which wraps up all of the MLOps node into a single node, which is useful if you simply want to generate an image and you don't want to do any com uh, complicated modifications to attributes or deal with any attributes. So once you've done that, you can now also click spacebar two, go into a top view, uh, which is you know the uh, 
uh, orthographic view of um, the grid. So as you can see, it has generated this and we can use it to, for example, uh, change the prompt. So I'm going to be saying a uh, photograph of a penguin and just have it cook and we should see that this properly updates using stable diffusion. There we go. Of course, as you know, we've added a lot of other new tools like the analysis tools, segmentation tools, the stable diffusion, which you already had access to in MLOps 1.0, uh, some text tools, as well as some other utility tools that you can now use. There we go. Uh, this is how to install MLOps 2.0. Enjoy and let us know if you have any feedback or any requests. If you have bugs or issues, you can go to the issues page on our GitHub, simply log a thing here using the new issue button and we will take a look at it. Or you can also go to the wiki where you can find examples of all the different tools and examples being not tutorials right now, but uh, videos that show you what all the different tools do. And if you'd like to participate in the community, which has currently grown to over 800 people using MLOps, you can also join our Discord server. See you there. Good luck and enjoy.